Hello, boys and girls. Our next section is software. Focuses on cloud computing and virtualization. Cloud computing refers to a process in which computers on the internet are used to store, manage, and process data. Cloud computing can also be used to run applications or services on the internet like Google Docs and Microsoft Office 365. Some of you have been using or are using Microsoft Office as well as Google Docs. You are also gaming online, so that all involves cloud computing. So remember cloud computing is when we accessing the internet and using servers on the internet to store and manage and process our data. Advantages of cloud computing, it's scalable. This means that the capacity of your virtual machine can grow or grows as your requirements increase. The virtual machine is the machine that you're using on the internet. Affordable, a single virtual machine is affordable. It only becomes expensive once you need to rent large number of virtual machines. So affordability, it depends on the size of your business. Reliable, many cloud computing companies guarantee that the machine will be available to users always. So it provides, offers reliability. Fast, cloud computers and internet connection to these computers can be incredibly fast. Maintained, now in terms of the servers, the servers used for cloud computing are maintained by an expert team who ensure they continue running efficiently. So there's no need to be maintained by the company because it is maintained by a team that's running the, the company that's running the servers. Effect on hardware needs. Now for cloud computing infrastructure, they include server hardware, software storage, networking, adequate cooling and security for access control. This is expensive generally to set up and maintain. So businesses are moving to the cloud as cloud servers are available anyway, there is an internet connection. So it's easier to work with clouds than to have your own hardware and software and to maintain that. The virtual servers are built on large hardware platforms so they can scale up or down quickly, meaning you can increase or decrease the capacity whether it's yours, the speed, the storage space can be scaled up and down, up or down. And this is helpful for businesses whose computing infrastructure changes frequently. Businesses are becoming more reliant on cloud-based resources and less dependent on traditional IT hardware and software. One negative effect is downtime. For example, when businesses maintain their servers, it causes the system to be unavailable for use. So that is one disadvantage. Next, we're looking at software as a service. SaaS, software as a service, refers to applications that are hosted on the cloud and that users pay a monthly subscription to access. So you don't buy the license of the software to use, but you pay a subscription to use it online. That is software as a service. It's rental online, or online subscription to use the software. Many software applications present a service to users. This service may be to provide entertainment, increase productivity, or improve communication. There are different services being offered. With SaaS, applications are run on cloud computers and users access these applications through their web browsers. So the advantage is without any of the applications being installed on the local computers. So with software as a service, there's no need for you to install the applications, you are using them online. So you don't need to use your hard drive space to install the application. This works by a cloud computer performing all the tasks. That's how applications run. The cloud computers performs all the tasks and simply showing the user interface on your web browser. So if you look at the computers, you have the user interface 
on your web browser, but you're accessing the application on the cloud. Right. The advantages of software as a service is minimal setup is required, minimal initial cost. Software is updated automatically on the cloud computers. So unlike you installing or purchasing the license, and installing and updating, you have an automatic update on the cloud and you have the recent version of the software. New features are regularly added, can be used on any computer with an internet connection. So if you are using software as a service, you can use the application from any computer as long as your internet connection. It's easier to collaborate and share information with other users. It allow you to share your information easily. All right, we're looking at virtual reality. That's the next aspect. Now, virtual reality, there's your glasses here. Virtual reality is an artificial environment that is created with software. So VR is created with software. It is a computer generated simulation of a three dimensional image or environment. So a person sees the image, it is not here in reality, but this is what they see when they put on the VR glasses. The software takes them into a virtual environment. Purposes for gaming, use of VR application and, and virtual worlds. Military, they use it for training simulations so soldiers can train for combat situations. For education, so that large groups of students can interact in a virtual classroom with supporting data. It's healthcare, used for doctors and nurses to learn new skills like surgery simulation, phobia treatment, robotic surgery, and skills training. So there are many purposes of VR for an entertainment. And there's some of the many purposes of VR. Hardware and software requirements for virtual reality. You need a personal computer or a console or a smartphone to process and power the inputs and outputs sequentially. So you need a device. You also need input devices. Apart from the device that's going to run the software, you need input devices to let the user navigate and interact with the environment. To interact with it, you can use a joystick, tracking balls, controller wands, uh, track pads, there's data gloves that you get, and so on. The output devices for you to visually see, you present the VR content or environment to the users. So you get to use and you need visual auditory displays or haptic displays. So you need output that allows you to visually see the output devices, the screens that we're working with. You can use VR on your smartphone. So you have a smartphone screen, you have the headsets. Virtual reality is time critical and the software must manage it, not to destroy the feeling of immersion. So even using VR software, when you are placed immersed in an environment, it's time critical. So your movements and so on cannot have delay so that you, you know, do not lose the feeling of immersion. So the software must be able to manage. So therefore it's time critical. The advantage of VR, it can be used as a training tool in many areas of life, like remote access for surgery. It makes learning fun. It eliminates language barrier and dangers associated with scientific experiments by using VR. Then there is no actual experiment. So this eliminates the process of dangers. Virtual reality is a very convenient tool to connect people around the world. Limitations of VR, the software for uh, virtual reality is limited and in some cases inflexible as it cannot go out of that scope. It cannot simulate, for example, a real classroom where learning fluctuates. Virtual reality can be addictive and detrimental to social connections 
as it is not real life. It's only an imaginary world, so it can be addictive and detrimental to social connections. The next one is AR, augmented reality. And some of you have played this game on your smartphone where you place your Pokemon in, in a real life situation. People are running the road and you have the figure on the road that exists as in augmented reality. Augmented reality technology superimposes a computer generated image onto a user's view of the real world. So you superimpose an image on the real world. It provides a, a composite 3D view with full immersion. AR can be experienced through headsets that people wear and through displays on mobile devices. Now it uses the product view, for example, allows customers to view and interact with products or services before purchasing. In this example here, before you purchase this chair, you can view how it will look in your environment. That is augmented reality. There's a real environment and you see for imposing this image on that environment. Enhanced content allows users to embed, ver embed various types of data onto content. People can point their device at a real life object to get information about it instead of searching elsewhere. This is very valuable at museums. Here on the street, it gives you information on stores and locations. This is the real life situation and these are superimposed on it. So it gives you information So it enhances content. Also for training, it enables you, uh, enables you to train employees thoroughly for jobs allowing the trainers to learn the job responsibilities by fully visualizing them instead of simply reading. Right. There's also productivity. The software enables users to improve workflow and processes at the business. Factory line workers can spot potential dangers quicker. It engages your audience. People are inundated with print and television advertisements to a point where they don't pay much attention to them. Inserting augmented reality into advertisements will catch the eye of your target demographic. Hardware requirements for augmented reality, you need to be looking at your battery life, but it uses a lot of power battery life, field of view in 3D, onboard operating system, microphone, display capacity, Bluetooth, connectivity, Wi-Fi, Onboard storage capacity, input outputs like button, eye tracking, accelerometer, sound capacity, visual tracking. These are from the hardware requirements. The software requirements. AR software works in conjunction with devices such as tablets, phones, headsets, and more. These integrating devices contain sensors, digital projectors, and hence require appropriate software that enables computer generated objects to be projected onto the, into the real world. Onboard operating system and user interface to support the software. A web browser. Authoring to allow the user to use API links to other databases and websites to display information. These are some of the software requirements. The advantages is to get to enhance creativity, provide a new product experience, able to preview the product visually, build real-time data experiences, enjoy experimental ex experiences, functional users demo. Limitations of AR, rendering digital data into meaningful graphics, Scaling digital data to be suitable with the perspective of the visual field. Smartphones AR must work with limited storage, small processing power, and limited memory. The next concept is virtualization. Virtualization 
refers to running multiple computing environments on a single set of hardware. So if you look at this, there's your host hardware, that means your computer hardware, for example, your operating system, then you run virtualization software that's able to divide your system, for example, into three systems, or we can install three operating systems. And each operating system, if you look at this last point here, each virtual machine is allocated its own CPU, RAM, storage, and its own operating system. So all of this will have their own CPU, RAM, storage, and operating system. So virtualization refers to running multiple computing environments on a single set of hardware. Modern processing techniques allows effective use of CPU. These processing te techniques are multitasking, multi-threading, and multi-processing. We've done this in gate 11. Multitasking occurs when a single processor splits its time between different tasks. Multi-threading completes the instructions for multiple different tasks inside the same program. So one program is divided into threads and all of them are all the tasks are executed by switching between them. Multiprocessing, the key word is have many processes used to complete tasks and processes. So here, one process is splitting the time. Here we have multiple processes. And here we have a program being split into tasks and then run. Now, these techniques are, are heavily used in virtualization. A single computer can be broken into many virtual machines. So this technique of multiprocessing and multithreading is heavily used because you have to process for each of these operating systems. Uses of virtualization is testing different operating systems and software, cloning computers, hosting cloud applications and allow multiple people to use the same computer at the same time. The benefits, less expenditure. Servers, storage and desktop, it saves capital and operational expenditure, reduces the number of software licenses. So you're still installing the software on one machine, which may be run as if they're more than using virtualization software has more than one machine, but you're still running on one. So it's less expenditure, but it saves the cost of separate, for example, desktops or separate machines. So it saves assets. Server virtualization supports multiple applications to operate on a single server, enabling the same assets to be better utilized. So we're looking at using maximum use of your computer, of your server or a computer. Disaster recovery options, including building a high availability and disaster recovery processes without replicating everything. So we have the options of including, include building a high availability and disaster recovery process. Green it with fewer server and storage resources, the demand for power and cooling can be reduced. Because we're now, for example, using one machine instead of three machines, it is eco-friendly in terms of the demand for power and cooling is reduced. Long-term benefits, virtualization starts to change the basic infrastructure, saving money and establishing a new foundation for ongoing developments. So this is the way forward in the long term to save environment saving costs. Thank you, boys and girls.